everyone, and welcome into HCAM Sports Talk. Tom Nappy here. Joining us on the show today, we'll have Andy Barron, Craig D'Alessandro, and Mike Tarosian to talk about NFL free agency as well as the March Madness tournament. But first, here's a look at what happened recently in Hopkinton Hillers Fall 2 Sports. Hopkinton Hillers Swimming hit the pool of Milford High School to determine their results versus Holliston Medway Co-op. Each team is swimming separately this year. Results for this contest should be determined by Friday, March 18th. Here's a look at how it went. Five bingo, so that's three fives for, for Olivia. Good job. Seven, six and a half. Let's just have two judges tonight. Seven and a half. And then um, Deirdre and Natalie are battling it out. At the moment, Deirdre is a little bit ahead of Natalie. So let's see how they all do on the turns. The turns can make all the difference. You can really pick up a lot of, um, that wasn't the, the best turn for Deirdre, but uh, she definitely pulled a little bit ahead of Natalie, which is good. She actually could catch Kevin Connor. Won the race, yeah. Kevin won the race by by a lot. He looked great. She could catch Connor if she could just uh, almost. Okay. All right. Very nice. Nice. It was and, a good race. Uh, Natalie yeah. is finishing up here. She looks great. She finished strong, Natalie too. Absolutely. I think they all. I think that's personally. I feel it's one of those challenging uh, events. Yeah. Events. So. Hopkinton Hillers JV Volleyball defeated Holliston in three straight sets and took their first home contest with a sweep. Following the JV game, Hiller Varsity Volleyball took on Holliston and started off with a nice first set. Steve Sweetapple had the call. Just long. Nice eye. That's it. So the Hillers take the first set, 25 to 17. Uh, Lorette with the serve. Yeah, let's read that graph. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> oh. oh, nice play. Portal, but oh, great play. Gilday, nice. Great play from Mel. After a back-and-forth second set, it ended well for the Hillers as they took the second set, 25-19. In the third set, the Hillers took control. Seven zero, Hillers up. Sam, Catherine, back set, down the right down the middle. There you go. Match point for the Hillers. Kate Powers, there we go. Nice emphatic ending from Kate. Hopkinton took the third set 25 to 18 and the match via a sweep. Hello, everybody, and welcome into HCAM Sports Talk. Tom Nappy here, and joining us on the show today, our panel 
We have Andy Barron from MyFM 101.3. Craig D'Alessandro is with us from MyFM 101.3. Andy and Craig host the Sports Buzz every Saturday at 11 a.m. until 1 p.m. And we have our good friend Mike Terosian on the show today. Guys, how are you? Doing good, Tom. How about, how about yourself? Can't complain. It's been beautiful weather out there. Oh, tell tell yeah. me about it. I love. It's been uh, Mike and I were just talking about that before we came on. It's just it. You can't ask for you can't ask for better weather in March. <laughs> you certainly can't. And uh, hopefully it'll stay this way for the sake of high school football. Hopefully, because it's been perfect days for high school football. Of course, snow is a big concern at this time of year because occasionally you get one of those big blizzards. But so far, so good. And I don't think anybody's complaining about the weather for sure. So uh, today on the show, we'll, of course, dig into uh, NFL free agency. We'll talk about the NCAA March Madness tournament and uh, some other stuff that's going on. Uh, how's your brackets doing, guys? Anything? Uh, well, great. Ohio State or lost. What? We've had a lot of upsets. Ohio State lost. I had them winning the whole thing. So my bracket's going great. Yeah, there I'm looking go. okay because you, you know me. I'm a big Oral Roberts fan, and I got them winning it. Oh, can you imagine <laughs> the, the amount of money? It's if just, they, it's if you <laughs> put that in at the casino, you'd be in uh, pretty good shape right now. <laughs> I would. <laughs> wow, wow. I just looked at mine for the. I just looked at mine for the first time in like two days. Awful lot of X's on there. <laughs> yes. Oh, same year, same year. We'll we'll get into that. Uh, in a little bit but first off Patriots making all kinds of signings and uh, I'll pull up some of them that they made on the first day of free agency I haven't updated the list yet but these were some of the big names that they were able to sign Hunter Henry uh, Henry Anderson Kendrick Bourne Nelson Aguilar Jalen Mills Matt Judon uh, Devon Godshaw, Janu Smith, and Trent Brown. They are making move after move, bolstering up their offensive weapons, which, which they desperately need to do, and bolstering up their pass rush, which was one of the worst in the league last year. How you liking what the Patriots are doing in free agency so far, guys? Well, I just want to start off by saying, knowing that they signed Cam Newton for another year, I love seeing all these wide receivers <laughs> giving some, Cam someone to throw to. That's all I get to say about that. Tight ends. It all, the, 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 I mean, yeah, the tight end set that they have has the potential to be maybe the best in the NFL, maybe outside of Gronkowski and Cameron Breit in Tampa Bay. And I think that that's really getting underlooked because all I've been hearing is a bunch of complaining. Well, they still don't have a quarterback. I was like, yeah, but you got to understand, like they finally got some guys – that you're going to have to, to start, you know, taking notice of on the field. And I said this in the show last week, that it's like, you know, John U. Smith is a legit player. Hunter Henry, Nelson Aguilar, these guys can play. It's like, maybe they're not all pros, but you, you're going to have to plan for them. Because I think John U. Smith, if he's healthy, this is a nightmare matchup for defenses. And, and then you got Hunter Henry. He's, he's a goal. He's like Gronkowski. He's a goal line threat. I don't think he's as versatile as John U. Smith. But how do you defend that on the field, really? Right. That is, that is a huge challenge. And, you know, they're trying to have a Gronk and Hernandez type of conversation. No doubt. Type of uh, situation there with those two. Uh, I think those two together, that is going to be something to watch. John U. Smith, he's a speedy guy. He's a force to be reckoned with, too. I mean, <clears throat> he's the kind of guy you could send on an end around. You could do just about anything you want with him. Yeah. And Hunter Henry, he's the guy you look for in the end zone who has – a tremendous reach i think those two are going to be a great combination craig what are your thoughts um i'm gonna be the bad guy here i'm still <laughs> not convinced that this patriots team is that all much better than they were last year and i'll say it for one main reason that's the quarterback they have behind center right now um the offensive line i felt like they did a tremendous job bringing back trent brown people who know me i'm a huge advocate for trent brown he's the best offensive tackle in the national football league by far it's not even close uh, and you know, uh, looking at the moves that they made, looking and looking at the disaster that was every single game, because I watched every single game last year, all 60 minutes, uh, and the moves they've tried to make this year, 
Sure, looks like they're you. trying to transform <laughs> this uh, Patriot offense into what Carolina used to be, trying to make Cam a little bit more comfortable because he was not comfortable in that offense last year, and he was probably one of the worst quarterbacks I've ever seen play the game of football last year. I wouldn't go that far. I mean, I he wasn't I go great. further. <laughs> All right, fair <laughs> enough. I mean, he had some really bad games, horrible games. Yeah. But he did have some really good ones. After he got COVID, it, I don't know what happened. I don't know if COVID just took everything he had out of him. But before he got COVID, he was playing good. He played great against Seattle. That was a mm-hmm. heck of a game. It went back and forth the whole way. And he was, what, 2-1 and one when he got COVID? And then pretty much everything fell apart after that. Yep. I still think the guy has something left in the tank. He's not what I would want to be the starting quarterback for this season. I I was thinking they were going to maybe bring in Jimmy G or something like that, but I don't know. Free agent, a free agent might be out of the realm of possibilities for quarterback at this point. I actually picture him drafting one to give Cam Newton competition, but I guess my hope is that they give Cam Newton some competition. And I don't think Jared Stidham counts as competition. I think you got to draft somebody, maybe trade up, go get Justin Fields from Ohio state. And if you can, maybe even Mac Jones from Alabama, you got to give the guy competition. Uh, I think this year and what they have will give more of a fair shot to Cam Newton to see if he can actually play. Last year, there were a lot of circumstances such as the shortened preseason and shortened practice time that he got before the regular season game started with the pandemic. And of course, they had no weapons at all last year, which I've been complaining about for about three years now, but they had no weapons at all last year. So that alone was a factor. And most of the receivers they had couldn't even catch the ball or get open. So that made things very difficult. And I think they were getting used to, from a coaching standpoint, Cam Newton's style of offense, which is, of course, a lot of running the ball and Obviously, Rex Burkhead, you know, getting hurt early on didn't help either. So I think there was a lot of factors that played in to the down season it was. But I feel adding the weapons that they're adding, because now you got those two tight ends that can be absolute forces to be reckoned with. You got Nelson Aguilar, Kendrick Bourne added to the receiving core. They're speedsters. They're guys that need to be reckoned with. They're difficult to cover and can make uh, great plays when they stay healthy. Aguilar dropping the ball, of course, is a concern, but he had a good season last year. But now I feel like he's getting a fair shot. So if he is the guy, we're truly going to see if he could play this year. Last year, I don't think it was really a fair shot. Uh, But we'll see it now, most likely. But I do think that it's not out of the realm of possibilities they bring in another quarterback one way or the other. I think they're going to end up drafting a guy Uh, But I guess, all right, I'll I'll give Cam Newton another chance with this receiving core and give him a full preseason to get ready, and then we'll see how he does. But obviously, you don't want a season like you had last year. So if Cam Newton starts to struggle early on, you got to cut the cord very quickly. And I will say, I don't think they're done in free agency at this point. I understand they've had a very tremendous first week, but, uh, you know, you hear the reports that I'm still trying wanting to trade Nikhil Harry away. Uh, they do not have a pass catching running back right now, which is a staple of the Patriots offense and what uh, Cam Newton is used to as well. So I, I would expect more moves to come. And again, back to Justin Fields, I would expect them. Uh, if they don't, they had the chance. They had the chance to bring in a quarterback into the league, you know, uh, Ryan Fitzpatrick, I would not have liked that move, but it would have been an upgrade over Cam Newton. There were plenty of quarterback options that were available on the free market over Cam Newton, and they went back to Cam for relatively cheap money like they did last year. I understand different circumstances. Uh, but still, you this you, if you can't have Cam Newton as your future on this team, I'm sorry. Something happened with that arm last year. I just don't understand it. But I would say in most likely scenario, you trade with Atlanta because they just redid uh, – Matt Ryan's contract. You trade Atlanta number nine, and ho- hope and pray that one of uh, Justin Fields, who the Patriots really like, or Mac Jones, are still there. Well, I, th- I think the other thing too is is that it clearly seems like to me, and I said this last week, the Tom Brady era is over now in New England. Hmm. It seems like they finally do have somewhat of a plan. I agree with Craig that 
Cam Newton is not the future of this team. But I don't think Jarrett Stidham is either. So obviously they're either going to trade up or they're going to draft somebody. I, I, it just seems like to me they do have some sort of a plan now. And I think that's why Patriots fans were getting so frustrated last year because look, it was so removed from Tom Brady and that's how the, how it all went down. But now I'm, I'm, I'm over it now. It's, it's done. We've moved on and they have made themselves better. I mean, granted, it still might be a slow start for this team because none of these guys have played together yet. And we still don't know what the preseason is going to look like. We still don't know what the off season is going to look like. I think the draft is being held virtually again, or maybe just a few fans are going to be. Actually, held. they just announced that they're going to do it in person again. Person, yeah. But 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 with limited amount of limited. people. Yeah, because yeah. you can only do twelve percent. Right. So like that. So so again, and, and you know, and the other thing I want to mention too is, and I, I might have said this last week, but there are going to be fans in the stands this fall. We don't know how many yet, but I'm going to tell you something. If Cam is playing like he did at some points last year, oh, he's going to hear it. There were no fans in the stands last year. Right Now they're coming back. They are going to – it is going to be – especially if, if the Patriots don't start off playing well, he's really going to hear it. But I don't know if Bill's going to pull him. I, I just don't know if he's going to do it. He really likes Cam. He really, really does. Yeah, and I, I think – I think sticking with him for another year – Getting all these um, free agents, do I think that they're going to look to build him for another year or two? Or are they just trying to, like we said, everybody else has said, are they trying to put together this master plan that is going to be pulling out some major trades at the drafts? I I think something's brewing here. And I think sticking with Cam what, with one more year was a smarter move than, I don't know, going after Jimmy. You know, I think this year was the, in my opinion, yeah. spot of move is built. And you, you see your wide receivers, you see the tight ends that they get. They said, all right, well, maybe now you get some some people that he can throw to, but are they sticking with the kid because it was a cheaper deal than something else and all the money they're going to be spending in the trading at the drafts? I don't know. It's, it's way too complex for me to get my head around. Um, but, you know, my – in, in Bill, we trust. Come on, you know, and, and I'm ready for it. Yeah, I wouldn't say Cam is uh, better than Jimmy G. I'll take Jimmy no, G no, no, over no. Cam. I, mean, I, I would take Jimmy G over, but I'm saying for what they're building, the plan that they have, it was better to stick with Cam than a questionable, healthy Jimmy G. Mike, you oh, said right. that that is such a great point because I don't think Jimmy Garoppolo was reliable. Oh, yeah. that's that's your problem. If, if, that's if he true. Was, he did if have he was his injury Jimmy, problems. If, if he was the Jimmy G before he went to San Fran, yeah, definitely get him back. But he's not. Right. That, also, that Cam Newton, also, Cam Newton was tremendously easier to acquire than young Jimmy Garoppolo, who's <laughs> yeah, now 30, exactly. by the way. You know, and the thing is, yeah. the money they spent for Cam, I don't think they'll have any problem making him the second string. It's not like they had to spend a ton of money for this guy. It was it's very cheap. Yeah, he's a, he's only owed guaranteed like four point five million dollars. Yeah. The re, the re, the other ten million that's like funny money that you know. Yeah, Super if he Bowl. gets MVP of the league, he'll make it. So, haha, <laughs> <laughs> that's not going to happen. In, into no. the Super Bowl. <laughs> right. Yeah, I mean, uh, I mean, it's just again, I, I've uh, I've moved on from all that. Look, he's the guy right now, and we're just we're, we're just going to have to deal with it. We're not get we're not getting. A big time quarterback in here. It's not happening. And I mean, would you really want? I don't even know if I want to say this. Do you really want a guy like Deshaun Watson now? After everything that's going on with him, he's no, not too much it's controversy. Not. No, no exactly. What's exactly. Up, what's because it's you're up, gonna up. have another Antonio Brown in your hands, yeah. and we don't need that. You yeah. just, I mean, that does not look good for him right now. It really doesn't. Yeah, Brady would probably get him to sign with the Bucks, but uh, <laughs> he probably would. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I mean, before this whole situation happened with Deshaun, I would absolutely take him. He's a tremendous talent. Oh, yeah. He had the best numbers in the league last year, but yeah. now there's just too much controversy, yeah. and that's the last thing you need in this locker room, especially bringing in all these new guys. And, you know, there's probably a few egos that they sign in the free agent market. Sure. I've heard that Nelson Aguilar could be a bit of an ego sometimes, and uh, Judon as well. So, you're bringing in a lot of different personalities. The last thing you need is anybody controversial. 
I mean, in the back of my mind, I was really hoping they would try to get Russell Wilson somehow, but I don't think anybody's going to get him. I think he's going to stay right where he is. Hey, yeah. Uh, but I'll be very shocked if they don't draft somebody, if they don't draft a quarterback high. I, I, you know, I mean, if it's not the first round, at least the second or third, they have to have some kind of backup plan in case Cam fails or, uh, you know, they have to have somebody that can give them competition. See who's better in training camp. I think you'll uh, get get a good glimpse. You know, if if you got Cam going against Justin Fields or Mac Jones or someone like that, that's pretty good. And you know, let's say Fields wins the preseason battle, he's your starter. Cam's the backup. Okay. Well, I'll take Cam as a backup any day. I think he'll he'd probably be one of the most reliable backups in the league. Uh, certainly not one of the most reliable starters in the league as of right now, but having him in a backup situation wouldn't be bad. I don't think it's set in stone that cams the starter. I really don't. I think they're going to draft somebody. I think free agency is still a slight possibility. I think they will give this guy competition, but what I think cam was, he was an insurance plan to ensure that they at least had a reputable starter. Uh, they didn't want Stidham being, you know, the starter in case no one else is available or in case uh, who they get in the draft doesn't pan out. At least with Cam Newton, you know you have something at the starting role uh, under center. So I'll be surprised if they don't draft somebody and give them some competition, though. I don't, I don't think we know officially who the Patriots' starting quarterback is yet. But I do love what they're doing with the weapons. I love what they're doing with the defense. And they're really trying to build a winner here and spending all this money. Uh, do you really think that if Cam fails, they're not going to pull him? Uh, they're spending too much money now to mess around. They didn't do it last year. Sorry, yeah. go ahead, Craig. They didn't do it last year. They didn't yeah. spend money last year. They spent like nothing. They re-signed a couple guys. They didn't really get anybody in the free agency market. This year, they're spending all kinds of money in free agency. They're investing in this team, and they're trying to make it better. So they certainly want a better result than last year, and I don't think mm. they're going to hold back. Because, yeah, you know, if you believe the tea leaves coming out of Foxborough last year and this year are all part of one big grand scheme to try and make the next great Patriots team. Very well could be. They could yeah. have a big scheme you know, uh, up their they, sleeve. They, they knew they knew the TV money was coming in. They knew the salary cap was going up. So uh, I guess they like this is this is what people have been telling me. Last year was a designed bad year to try and get a better draft pick. And this year will be they'll be all right. Certainly won't be Super Bowl contenders. And then, uh, you know, next year, you know, if it's the quarterback they draft or the quarterback they bring in, they go um, they, they, they blow off the barn doors and start be, trying to be in the Patriots. But as it stands right now. I do not see this Patriots team being any better than they were last year as long as Cam Newton is quarterback. That's just my honest opinion. And who's the leader of this team? Who is the leader of this Patriots team? Like, I mean, Devin McCourty, Matthew Slater, Matthew yeah. Slater. Yeah, yeah I would, okay. I, I think David Andrews too. I think he. I think he's sure. up there. Yeah. Um, Glad they got just, him back. Yeah. So I mean, okay. I, I think that's good. But um, you know, it really all starts with your quarterback. I think that's Edelman, good. maybe. Yeah. Well, you know, <laughs> hey, the players did vote Cam Newton as a uh, captain. Oh, the I, player, the players love Cam. They Newton. love Cam. Right. Yeah, There's no doubt about love him. him. Yes, of course they do. We don't they like him. Cam. We don't like him as I love Cam Newton as a person. I think he's very. I think he's one of the smartest people in the league. Um, very uh, philosophical. Just can't throw anymore. That's my thing with him. I love right. Not against him as a person. When yeah, Tom Brady, yeah, Tom Brady starts there. sucking, I'll hate him too. <laughs> that will never I'm, happen though but 25 I, years later i'm still waiting for that to happen that's not gonna happen oh i i think secretly robert Kraft put john tappet on the uh payroll and so we got nfl rescue for the patriots going on and we had a uh, stress open which was last year and i see this year here it's uh it's gonna be oh here's the good night with all the new products you know just like the bar rescue I, that leads for, <laughs> It's you know, cool. last I year I kind of felt like it was going to be a throwaway year anyway. Just seeing it sure felt like with everything been. going on. This and was not a Brady normal leaving year in the, the pandemic. No, yeah, uh, this wasn't a normal year. They didn't yeah, really sign anybody. Year. People are going to forget this year, other than because what does anyone remember about last season, other than the pandemic? Brady won his seventh ring. Is yep. there anything else to remember about this nope. season? So it's like, poof, God. And like like Eddie says, I'm over it. I'm over it. Yeah, it's done. It's time to get on with life again. Yeah, I mean, 
Pittsburgh and, starting off 11 and 0 and then falling fat on, oh, flat God, on their was face. Just, was kind that of was hilarious. unreal, man. Really. And they <laughs> lost bad. to the Browns <laughs> in the playoffs. Well, Bob was happy though. He was happy the Browns won. <laughs> he certainly was. <laughs> but yeah, it, it was not really a memorable year. A lot of weirdness. A lot of weirdness. Yeah. I mean, for all sports. It's been right. all sports, for everything too. in life, yeah. really. But yeah, I know it was it was definitely weird because I actually was ahead of all the picks every week on the show. So I don't know. That's that's an oddity. I'm never that far ahead. I'm usually in the back watching everyone win. We weren't ahead in the <laughs> picks every week. Just about right, right at the bottom. Yeah, oh, that was the bad. most un un unreal <laughs> season I've ever seen. I, I I don't know if we'll ever see a season like that again. I'm shocked they got through it. Yeah, I, I am mean, too, Tom. I gave it a 50 50 50 all year long. If they were even going to get through it, I figured one way or the other, they would, but they got through it without like delaying the end of it. Really? Uh, Obviously they had to move, but they forced that with a couple of games. Yeah. Yeah. The new Orleans game. (laughs) Yeah. If you were, if you were a terrible team, you were playing those games. If you were, if you were a good team, like, Oh, this is, Oh, it's the Steelers just the Ravens. Let's, how about how about Wednesday no night football? Play the bad Wednesday teams night. could get the co- <laughs> the bad teams could get COVID. That's fine. Yeah, yeah. The Broncos had they didn't even have a quarterback and they yeah. were forced to play. <laughs> I mean that is horrible. I right, I'll, 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 we who who got COVID? Denver. They can play. <laughs> I was off. They're not going anywhere. Yeah, I mean, but, but, but just look at that though. I mean, all sports. I mean, look what's going on with the Bruins right now. Are they even pl- are they playing tonight or tomorrow? no? They're not playing tonight. Uh, Hopefully, play they'll tomorrow. be back on the ice on Thursday. Tomorrow on Thursday. Yep. Yeah. That's gonna mess them up. I mean, they're they're doing pretty good up until uh, that. And happened. they always it always happens when they play Buffalo. What is up with Buffalo? They have a, had a major problem with COVID this year. Yeah. It's seriously. I mean, every time they play Buffalo, there's a problem. It's they should just kick them out of the league. <laughs> Of oh, what? What's it? Thirteen in a row they lost. Oh, well, well, yeah. yeah, so bad. Totally no, I mean it's it's take a year off. Six game losing streak right now. Terrible. Yeah, I mean I don't know. It's just it's just been one of those years, man. And it's still it still is it still is weird, you know. I mean, but some normalcy. I mean, at least with the NCAA tournaments back this year. I mean, even though it, I was watching one game the other night, and it just it still felt like you're in a high school gym. I mean, very little noise. Just kind of the players are all spread out. It was right. weird. Oh, I was uh, I was covering the uh, Hopkins swimming last night. The piping in crowd noise. Really? Women. It was it was unreal, and I didn't notice it too much because I'm wearing the headphones, listening to the announcers. Really? The camera. I thought that was the team it, cheering their other team. No, the team's all quiet over uh, on the yeah. side seats, just talking. But it, uh, the way I noticed, I took my headphones off, and as soon as the last person finished, it stopped hot. Like you just hit the mute switch. You didn't fade it down you just hit the mute switch and i could tell every time and when the um the start would go the side gun would go boom it's it came right on hard so yeah they piped in crowd noise at the vir- in virtual swimming they can't it was against ashland but ashland doesn't swim until friday right yeah right. you gotta wait That's, on those results well, thursday yeah and they're friday. doing that in track and field too that they're, they're having yes. virtual meets one team goes one day yep. maybe the other team goes another day now we have two divers in uh, in Hopkins. Not to change that subject, but we have two divers that are uh, contenders for All American, and because they can't go to these extra meets where you get those extra dives, they are now allowing at these virtual meets to for you to do extra dives. So our two uh, All American candidates uh, did eleven dives instead of just the six last night. So uh. it, it's a weird system to get used to. This yeah. is all new stuff. Oh yeah. Well, that's the way it is really across sports in general, especially um, seeing football teams on the same sideline. Right. Tell them. Yeah. Yep. And not a whole lot of fans at the football game by design, by uh, design. which is certainly different. And they're playing in March, which is very different. And if I got to admit, it has felt strange calling football lately. It's been really weird. Yeah. It's taken uh, some getting used to. When was the last time you called a football game in a t-shirt? Come on. Right. <laughs> Yesterday, pretty much. Yeah. yeah. Well, Tom had to do it on la- uh, long sleeves the year before because don't forget, it was Triple E the year before. Yeah. Right. Oh, Tom and I were doing games. I'm like, at three thirty in the afternoon, you can't even see because the sun's in your face, and yep. oh, that was it's, and that was weird. But yeah, not like this. this I mean, no, this pandemic no. stuff is very real. 
it's just it, it's, it's un- out of this world it's it's even hard to comprehend some days you're like are we still doing this it's just like it's 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 really it's it's incredible <laughs> hey, hey guys we still have the spring season to do you know yeah after this we still that, spring. oh that that goes all the way to Ju- early july, july so july <laughs> yeah so which that, uh we t- we talked to um milford uh softball and milford uh legion head coach steve devito on saturday on the sports buzz and he is none too pleased that these tournaments might go into july i can't imagine it's it's going to affect legion baseball i mean typically you got legion baseball starting what mid-june yeah so they're gonna either have to shorten their season or do something i've heard of a shortened season with the playoffs in the middle of it like they did a couple of years ago determining who goes to states i've heard possible cancellation of states uh no one knows what's up with legion right now right. but well i know i know the plan right now is you know full bar ahead full legion season that's their plan currently wow so they'll probably have to go, they'll have to go later especially if that's... they're going to do regionals and nationals and all that yeah. stuff Right. And, and, and like, and like he said, coach DeVito said, it's like, if you have a tournament on July 3rd, like these kids are already, I mean, you've already been out of school for like, you are messing with weeks. vacations at that point. They're already on vacation. Yes, exactly. That's Including such a mine. great point though. I didn't even think of that, <laughs> but it's true. Like after July 4th, I mean, come on, everyone's in summer mode. I mean, right. that, yeah. You know, I understand yeah. what the MIA is trying to do here. They're trying to make it up to the spring kids that didn't get yeah. to play last year by giving them a full season, giving them the full sectionals. And now the States got voted through. So they're having the full state tournament for spring sports, but shorten the season a little bit, you know, people do want to go on vacation. You, you can't run the season all summer. Um, well, yeah, they're going to want to go on vacation. Now the places are open last year. wasn't bad. Right. And, you know, I think you'll run into a situation where some of the athletes do go on vacation and yep. maybe don't play in the playoffs and, you're missing a couple key guys. And and he also talked about travel tournaments. The amount of money that goes into these tournaments. I mean, Craig, remember we were he was Coach Vito was talking about that, about how, hey, if if they've already paid their way to that, yep. and now you have a state tournament, they're not gonna back out of that travel tournament. Mm-hmm. Now, again, there are so many things that I never even thought of before we had this interview. And it, it's but it's so true. I mean, there's just so many other factors that that come into play here. Now you don't know if any other things are going to be going on in the spring as well. Um, it's just, I guess it's just going to be, it's just going to be one of those years where you, you just, you really don't know what's going to happen or if something's going to get delayed or it's going to get. So it's going to be like last year. Yeah. No, I know. <laughs> Plus Tom wants to go on vacation. So he doesn't want to be calling games on July 4th. I mean, That's right. That's right. <laughs> July 4th is my vacation. Don't mess Please. with that. Please don't. <laughs> Uh, so anyways, getting back to the Patriots, they've made a lot of moves already. Um, what do you guys feel they need to do next? Is there any position that you think that they need to still uh, keep sprucing up at? Um, I wouldn't mind seeing them get even another receiver to add to that mix because yeah. seeing how unreliable Aguilar and Bourne can be, especially Bourne with all the injuries he has had. In recent years, I still think they could use another receiver. Obviously, we know they could use a quarterback in one way or the other. But besides quarterback, you know, I'd say receiver, running back, they got Damian Harris, who's good. He had a great year last year. Brandon Bolden and um, Sonny Michelle. Sonny Michelle, they still got. So maybe another running back. Oh, and Burkhead. Burkhead's back too, right? Yeah, just a lot of question marks, just with injuries, especially with Damian Harris and Rex Burkhead. And we don't know if James White's going to be back. We don't, Sony Michelle is, is iffy as well. I, I think maybe another receiver. I, I think that is, yeah, we could. I, I, I'd really like to see him address the uh, defensive back situation. Uh, you got Stefan Gilmore, who's on the lame duck year of his contract. They'll be up after this year. Um, you don't know what's going to happen with JC Jackson. He's a restricted free agent. He's probably going to be back. I'd be shocked if he isn't. And then uh, you look at the safety situation right now, their defense is still relying on a 32 year old Devin McCourty. Uh, you know, Patrick Chung just retired. Uh, he brought in uh, Jalen Mills from Philadelphia. Uh, you know, um, I like Kyle, du- Kyle, Kyle Duggar and Adrian Phillips are more line. They're more linebackers to the stage than they are um, safeties. So 
uh, I, I, you know, and also uh, Jason McCourty is a free agent, so right, so they're uh, so right now he's starting corner for uh, Stefan Gilmore and uh, JC Jackson. So you know, Jonathan Jones is there too. So I, um, I still look. The Patriots address a lot of needs this offseason. Let's not kid each other. They still need to address the quarterback position. We talked about that, but the, the sneaky area of need for the Patriots is that defensive back. Right. Yeah, I have to agree there. I mean, Jalen Mills was a good pickup uh, and he's a versatile guy, but you're having issues with uh, Gilmore, too. You don't even know if he wants to come back. He might not even be here when the season starts. Rumor is he could be holding out or the Patriots could just straight out get rid of him. You get rid of him, you're certainly going to need another corner and you're going to need a good one. Uh, Jalen Mills is good, but he's no Stefan Gilmore. Uh, so yeah, I mean, you, I think you'll have to bolster up that secondary. Obviously their main concern as of right now has seemed like it's been the pass rush. They've been trying to build that up since it was one of the worst in the league last year. They've done a good job at that. Uh, but yeah, I think secondary will, uh, certainly have to be something that they'll have to look at. And that, that could be something they plan on addressing in the draft because they do have a lot of draft picks. They yep. got one coming back from Brady and they got a few others from trades. So they'll have a I lot. Feel, of I, feel like the, I feel like the pass rush kind of, you know, they kind of solved that over the last couple of days, even though I still feel like, you know, like a lot of things on this Patriots team has gotten old. Matt Judon's going to help. I'm not sure what, to what extent bring Kyle Van Noy back, which is hilarious by the way. Yes. Uh, is, I love that. I love that. Is, coming that's back. that one's going to help too. Uh, Chase Winovich is going to be a lot better this year. Uh, they brought in Hunter Henry. Uh, they, they, no, Hunter Henry's running, but Henry Anderson from the Jets. Uh, and they're they're starting from over again, really, on the defensive line because uh, Dietrich Wise and Adam Butler both left. But pass rush wise, you know, they're getting Dante Hightower back. Yeah, he's a year older, but he's coming off a career year at age 29. So, you know, there's still plenty, there's still plenty of tread on that tires. So I feel a lot better about the defense than I do about the offense. I don't know what we're gonna see on the offensive side of the ball, which is you know what what 75 percent of fans care about anyway right um obviously well you know belichick's a defensive minded yes. guy yes absolutely he <laughs> could be trying to transition this team into more of a defensive team obviously he knows he needs some kind of balance but he might his mindset could be hey all right we'll roll with cam see how he does we'll draft somebody if cam's horrible we'll hopefully be able to put in who we draft Maybe who we draft will be better than him in training camp, and we'll put him in right off the bat, but let's concentrate on defense this year. If I'm in the Patriots organization, I beg Bill Belichick to just focus on the defense and put someone in charge of the offensive situation because Bill Belichick for, what, 15 years has tried to develop the offense on his own via the draft? It hasn't worked. If, if I'm him, I, I, let Bill, I let Bill Belichick take care of the defense. I let him do the head coaching position, but as far as – you know, offensive skill evaluations. Go, I give that to like McDaniel's or something. Well, why? I don't know. I don't know why they would let uh, Belichick take over the defense when we got Patricia coming back. Oh yeah, that's yeah. Tom <laughs> sold about that. Oh, yeah, that yeah. helped a lot. That right? helped a lot. But it... yeah, let's let's see what uh, Belichick goes. Yeah, there, there's your most yeah. worthless pickup of the offseason. Can, can, can I? Can I? Can, I, can Patricia become head coach and keep Belichick as the physical coordinator? If, yeah, if, if nothing, if, have... if if nothing else, Patricia was addition by uh, sub, subtraction by addition because he deterred a lot of free agents to come here because you look at uh matt stafford didn't want to come here because of patricia matt uh, kenny galladay didn't want to come here because of patricia and did you guys know that where uh nick casario used to sign his uh used to sign his name on patriots contract you know whose name goes there now matt patricia Patricia. Huh. Yeah. yeah i would have loved galladay too uh, i Good think player. that would have been a great addition i don't know why they brought i mean obviously him and belichick are buddies but what's he gonna give you What's he going to give you that you don't have? What a disaster I mean, in Detroit. What, that was just. What's the point? What, so what's his bad. worth? There's nothing he brings to the table. Nothing. No. I hated that. I hated that they brought him back. Hey, the guy wanted to leave and go to Detroit. He was awful. All those players Horrible. hate him. Horrible. Everybody he's ever worked with hates him. What's the point in bringing this guy back? Well, Tom, don't forget, he had the most exciting defensive play in Super Bowl history. That's what, what he that? said. That's what he's uh, he, he's taking. He's taking. He's uh, he's taking. He's taking. Um, what do you call it? He's taking claim 
for the Malcolm, Malcolm Butler, Butler move. Yeah, I mean. Oh yeah, I'm sure. He tried to sign him too. Yeah, I think he because he was my him. player. He was my defensive back. I'm, I'm pretty sure I didn't even hear uh, Matt Patricia's name come out of Malcolm Butler's mouth ever. No, he's <laughs> probably credit for that. I've heard Bill Belichick's name come out of his mouth, though, for credit for that. Mm. But, yeah, uh, he's worthless. And, you know, if you could have had Kenny Galladay, that's too bad. I, I really yeah, Jared, had. Jared was big. He was he was big on Kenny Galladay when he was telling us last week. You know. Yes. He where did he sign? Giants? Yes. The Giants oh. have been spending some serious money. They have. Mm-hmm. Yep, they have no, no doubt about it. They they might be better this year too. I the mean, thing well, is, they, they always spend serious money and they're never good. So I don't know. Yeah, well, they still got some. Except other when we make it to the Super Bowl. So Galladay was four <laughs> years, seventy-two million. A little high, but not yeah, terrible. Sure. Not terrible for that caliber receiver. I, I think he's a very underrated receiver. Good receiver. He's very good. But um. Yeah, I do think the draft is going to be very interesting. And they still have salary cap room left. They're not done yet. They had a lot of salary cap space coming into this year. So we may see some – I think we'll see some smaller level free agents. Um, I don't know if you'll see any big-name starters because obviously you got to save a little cap to sign draft picks. But Oh, that's about six – that's only about $6 billion. You got a lot of room to play with. Yeah. Yeah, don't forget it, it, that's it, when it, they acquired it, Randy Moss. It ain't Moss. like the good old days where you could pay Jamarcus Russell $100 million. Right. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I totally forgot about that He's guy. still getting paid, isn't he? Oh, yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> He's getting paid to just eat his cheeseburgers. That's right. He's living the dream. Un, that's, that's like Bobby Bonilla and his contract. He's still getting paid, too, <laughs> from the Mets. Yes. Un, unreal, man. That, that was my favorite part of the NFL offseason, where someone who can never, so someone who never even took a dra- uh, took a snap at the NFL level, someone like I remember Jake Long was one of the ones for me, the offensive tackle for um, Miami. He, made, he signed like a six year deal for like sixty four million dollars before he was even picked. That was amazing to me. And now what? You got a five year contract for I don't know five million dollars max. Yeah. Yeah, teams are uh, smarter for the most part. Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah. Now nowadays they are definitely S- signing guys to ninety hundred million hour uh, draft picks, especially to ninety million no, I, I, million dollar contracts, just doesn't usually work out well. No, obviously I'm I'm being uh, sarcastic on the money, but still that was outrageous. Yes, certainly was. All right, why don't we uh, take a look at the NCAA tournament? And it's a pretty odd sweet 16. Oh, wait. Yeah. Uh, is this the women's basketball? Wouldn't that, wouldn't that be funny? Let's take a look at the tournament. Show the wrong one. Okay, no, this is the right one, I think. Syracuse. And- I, I got it right here. So in the West, uh, you got Gonzaga and Creighton and yep. USC and Oregon. In the yeah, that is the women's basketball one. I'm sorry. I come so prepared for this show. Here we go. Men's Sweet 16. All right. I'll keep trying to find. Keep reading them off, Andy. All right. So that so that's in the West. Actually, I got three out of the four picks right, believe it or not, in that one. And then you go over into the East. You got Michigan versus Florida State. And then you got UCLA versus Alabama. There we go. And in the South... You have Baylor versus Villanova and Arkansas versus uh, Oral, Oral Roberts. 15th seeded Oral 15th. Roberts. So they've knocked out a one or a two seed and a seven seed. Unreal, man. Three seed and a seven seed. Yeah. That is unbelievable. It's unbelievable. That I mean, is a, you, like a Butler type of run, like from a could, few years ago. Yeah, or George Mason or something like that. You know, you've got to take them seriously now. There's no doubt about it. And look at this Oregon State, Loyola, Chicago, 12 seed and an eight seed. Yep. People love you got Loyola. Syracuse versus Houston. I think, you know, this year is the perfect year to have like an 11 seed win it all. Yeah, yep. UCLA and Alabama. I mean, look at that difference. Yeah, I know. 11 and two. <laughs> Alabama is really good. They can yeah. shoot the three ball, they're unbelievable. Uh, Houston and Syracuse. I did, I had Q's, I had three brackets. I had Q's getting knocked out. In all three of them, I think, in the first round. Or I think one of them I had him going to the second round. But I didn't have much hope for Cuse because they had some COVID problems. And they didn't. They looked okay this year, but nothing special. But, hey, yeah. they're in it. They're in the they Sweet 16. They always seem to 
to, to play well in the tournament. They always have been like that. They're always been a team where well, you're right, Tom, where they've had some problems and then they're just have always been like that. And then that, boom, they're in the sweet 16, you know, it's well, just, and the weirdest thing this year, there's no Duke. There's no Kansas. Yeah. <laughs> it's weird not to see those teams. North Carolina. Players. Yeah. You know I mean? Yeah. Well, North Carolina was in, they got knocked out in the first round. First round. Yeah. Is Kansas still suspended? I think so. Okay. Because I know Duke got infected by Boston College in the ACC tournament. Well, Duke actually, they weren't selected. They had a bad year. They went like 13 and 11, and they just didn't get in. They still would have found a way to weasel their way in somehow. But I think there was a number of factors, too. I think they had some COVID issues. and They did. Yeah, yeah, they faced they faced Boston College in the ACC tournament. Then, like four people got uh, COVID, and Boston College is rampant by COVID this year. Yeah, and VCU they had to forfeit their game against Oregon because they had a COVID outbreak. So that's the thing. If a, if a team has an outbreak, they they have to forfeit. I, I wonder though if uh, in the tournament they'll just keep it going. You know, at this point, you, huh? you got uh, four rounds left. Probably not. I mean, I, I'd imagine if some team has an outbreak, they'll have to postpone a game, but ho- hopefully we could at least have a normal tournament. They haven't had a move games yet. It was a little weird not having the tournament started on a Thursday this year. Yeah. Uh, but they did that because of COVID protocol. They have to have, they had to have like six days, I think between games or something. Uh, and they, that meant they had to do the first four uh, that Wednesday or that Thursday, they did all the first four on that Thursday rather than the first round. So the sweet 16 that is scheduled to start the 27th, which is Saturday. Typically that would start what the Thursday Thursday. after. Yeah. And that that's because you need that uh, five or six day period. Yep. So the teams that are going to play that Saturday, they, they're not any of the teams that played Monday, I don't think. you got to have those five days. So that's why the next round starting Saturday. So a little bit different this year, but as long as they get it in, there's no COVID outbreaks. It's great to see that they're at least having a tournament this year because I think we all really missed the tournament last year. Certainly. And just think of just how much revenue and money was lost from not having that tournament. They're really not making anything on it this year either. I mean, well, just, just tickets alone is just going to be, I can't even imagine how much money they've, they've lost. I I'm mean, sorry. I, I'm not worried about colleges losing money for but, tournaments when, when they have endowments <laughs> as ridiculous as Harvard, where Harvard could not take any tuition ever for any more from any kids and still have enough money coming in from their endowments. Yeah. I'm sorry. I'm not worried about it, believe me. And I see, I see, I mean, don't get me wrong, you know, my, my daughter did very well, played Division II lacrosse and everything, and, and down at Coastal, and the facilities are fantastic. They do spend the money on the programs or whatever. I get that. That's wonderful. But they're making big, big coin, and, you know, they lost the tournament. Oh, so sad. You know, they're not going to, you know, what are they going to do? Oh, what are they going to do? Pull like the Red Sox, you know, bleach your seats for $508 or something? What? You know, they, <laughs> Come on, I guess right. just I guess just what what does the future hold for some of these big tournaments and some of the you got to wonder are they going to do it in one city like that they're they're doing in in the women's and the men's they're only having it in one city just playing in some small gyms. A lot of people saying that they they kind of like it that way, just having it in one place instead of you know. And I'm, no- I'm I'm bummed about the draft. I really enjoyed that virtual draft last year. It was so different, but I thought it was really interesting. It was cool. And you had a camera inside all the athletes' homes and stuff like that. I just thought it was so cool looking and so interesting. And now they're, you know, going back to an in-person format. I don't think it's going to be as entertaining and interesting as it was last year. I I thought it was cool the way they did it last year. And obviously, you know, seeing Roger Goodell sitting in his basement and getting annihilated was a plus. But <laughs> uh, uh, I'm, a, I'm a big fan of the way they did that last year. And um, as far as the tournaments, though, no, I don't think this is the future of the tournaments. I think they'll go back to the normal format because there's too much money they're making. I, I mean, people buy tickets to go to two or three games in a day, four games, whatever it is. And they spend big money on those tickets. 
uh, and it? people fly from all over the country. There's so much money uh, the tournament makes with having people go to these games that I don't think, you know, they're going to change it permanently. Obviously, if there's a pandemic situation, I think this is their plan. But overall, I don't, I don't think it's going to change uh, how the tournament works. They'll get back to normal probably next year if this pandemic's gone by then. But uh, in any case, who do you guys have in the tournament winning it all? I had Gonzaga in two brackets and um, what was it? Oklahoma State, I think, in another. Oklahoma State's already out. I had Gonzaga in one and Beller in another. <laughs> I had uh, Gonzaga beating uh, Illinois. In my own, my only one, and to be fair, I just hit that you know like auto select button, so I that's how I feel about March Madness tournaments. Oh, you're better off just guessing, especially yeah, this hopefully, year. hopefully, your auto guess gives you Oral Roberts, <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah, Baylor is still alive, they got Villanova, you're in good shape there. Yeah, I had uh, but... Ohio State versus Gonzaga, so I had Gonzaga in the uh, I do have Loyola in the final four. I mean, that would be something if they make it there, that would be one of those nice. teams is going to make it. Yeah, oh, de- one definitely. Of, one of those double-digit seeded teams is going to make the Final Four. I think there's you a good think? chance. I mean, I don't, that's never happened before, right? I think George Mason was 12th wow. when they made you know, it. No, Butler did it but, one year as a double-digit seed. I think Dayton did too. I think they got in as a double-digit seed. One yeah, year. but then they both got their faces wiped out, didn't they? Pro- yeah, I think they lost the, <laughs> the semifinals. But yeah. Well, you, well, I can tell you one thing you're either going to have an eight or a 12 in the Elite Eight. I like that. I like that. Loyola Chicago or Oregon State. Loyola Chicago is an eight seed. Yeah, and you know, it's so much easier to root for a team like that, too. I mean, you know, because it's like, you know, a team like, you know, Michigan, Gonzaga, they're there all the time. They're great programs. But to see a team like that, I think those are the teams that people really uh, captivate, to. Oh, yeah. Everyone loves an underdog. Everyone loves a great underdog. How can you not like Loyola? Yeah. With Sister Jean. I mean, it's it's un. The players, she is like an icon. And now, what's she, 109 now? Something? She's like 103 years old. <laughs> she's never like missed a game. That the, the, the they, they love this woman. I mean, yeah. how once can you not get behind that? You know, once your bracket's busted, it's like go upsets, right? You just want to see upset after uh, upset. Yep. Oh, and another team that's not in the tournament that's pretty weird Louisville. They're usually in the tournament, yeah. Pretty well, yep. Very yep. different this year. But so is everything else. I'm just glad they're having a turn up, though. It has been good games. It's been fun to watch. Everything's for fun. I have no idea who's going to win at this point. Gonzaga's undefeated, still alive, but tough game against Creighton. That's going to be a battle. I think. Good team. Yeah, it's a good yeah. team. Creighton always good gives team. people a hard time. They do. Absolutely. Should be interesting, but. Believe it or not, we are out of time for this edition of HCAM Sports Talk. Craig, Andy, Mike, thank you so much for joining our conversation today. And we'll certainly have more of them in the very near future. For everyone at HCAM, I'm Tom Nappy. We thank you for joining us. Take care, be well, and we'll talk to you again next Wednesday at 3 p.m. Have a good one, everybody. It's a 103B front one and a half somersault pike. Juliana's up next. Juliana's a senior this year. Also performing a 103B. Now, did the divers like having the diving at the beginning? Well, yeah, I think so. I think it's nice because uh, they kind of get the jitters out right away and then they can be there for the rest of the team afterwards. Just doing the same dive as Eve, 104B. That's a 401C. That's an inward dive and tuck. Cool. We have Tyler Holbrow in lane three in the lead, followed closely by Mia Carboni 
in lane four. Oh, and uh, looks like uh, in lane two there that um, Olivia Scalara is uh, picking up on Mia Carboni and then um, Pablo way in lane six. Actually, I think he definitely outtouched Mia. I didn't see if he outtouched um, Olivia. And, and then we had Olivia Wade and Charlotte Dowd. Yeah, very good freshmen. swim. Very good swim by Tyler. I, I couldn't tell if it was, it's going to be close to a, um, it's, it's a very good time. I, I can only tell you it was in the 23s. Michelle, I'm curious if it's a lot sh uh, more shallow than Keith Tech where yeah. um, usually some, wow, that nice is swim by Aditya. nice swim by Aditya. I wish I and had. I have to say, Lucas, I did is, not Lucas, Lucas is, is coming. Yep, yep. yep. Whoa, Sophie come on, Lucas, to, push. All okay. right, I think Sophia might have outtouched him. Sports. Now, what did you say, Sean Haley? Is it Sean? Sean Haley's a junior. He's, he, he's trying to beat he's, out. Uh, he, yeah, he's got his I think eyes He's got to keep on. going. Go, go, go. And then, uh, let's see. Let's, Come on, uh, Ty Tyler. Not Tyler. Well, Tyler, Tyler and Sean. Look Sean. at that. They're neck yeah. and neck. And oh, my gosh. All right, I got, I got uh, Tyler at a 56-10. I don't know. Yep. Um, I That's a very good time. Um, I should have caught Cassie as well. So coming in here on uh, lane six, that was Katie Balster. And then we had um, Anna and then Elizabeth. Yeah. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, it's, it's a marathon. It is. It's 20 laps. So uh, you definitely, it's good to come out strong. But um, you want to, you know, really kind of pace yourself and, uh, so that you have that gas still in the engine at the end so you can really go that yep. last hundred. Yep. Um, and this is it, right? Uh, this is it for Alyssa and for Tyler. Yep. Um, I always lose track of the lane. Then I see that red thing There we go. Out. Oh, and I didn't stop the clock, darn yep. it. Anyways, we'll get we have Maggie McCarthy, lane two. Um, we have Deirdre Belger, lane four, and Natalie Buffard, uh, lane five. So you're going to see some people that have swam in this pool a lot. Uh, hopefully they come through. Um, <coughs> but we will go through it, lane two. Uh, Maggie starting off, Pablo uh, coming up second, Olivia Wade, another legacy from the Stingrays, coming up third, and Pierce Farrell, I think also a Stingray, former Stingray, yes. in lane uh, in, in four in lane two. Lane three, Brandon Davis Pishoff, uh, Holly Burns, and Sophia Luce. Lane four, um, Deirdre Belger, Mia Carboni, Aditya Dutta, Kevin Gu. And lane five, we have Nina Buffard, I'm sorry, Natalie Buffard, uh, Charlotte Dowd, and Anna, Anna Scalera, Olivia Scalora. <coughs> okay. Sorry, I keep hitting my microphone. Did you um, get the time on this one? I did not. I okay. messed it up, so I apologize. Um, yep. All right. So okay, that's a so nice uh, 50 there. That was uh, Brandon, I believe. Yep. And then, uh, right. We have Mia in oh, the water. Oh, that was Deirdre. That was Deirdre. Mia nice. in the water. Nice job, girl. All yeah. right. And we have Davis Pishov in the pool. He's All in right. the lead. Okay, and now who is that? Uh, who's swimming? Um, he looks good. Is he does look good. the water. Yeah. Oh gosh, yeah. I remember him when he was so little. I can't believe he's in high school and look how tall he is now. You know, we're not getting any older. That's no, sure. we are not. No. Okay, but now this is Aditya, I believe, uh, just dove in in lane four. So let's see if he can catch. Um, it looks like he's going to make a move here. He's going to make a move gonna on. He's going to try uh, to catch Holly. Holly, there. he's Holly catching Burns. Holly. I think. Yep. And then who's in? Um, he can Isn't rotate he? those arms, that kid. Oh, my God. Look at that. Yeah. And then that's Ooh. Olivia Wade there. In, uh, look at Aditya. Okay. And then who's, who will be the Olivia is making it happen over here. She's in lane two, right? She is in lane two. She's doing yeah. a great job. She's doing a great job. And uh, so now we have um, Kevin Gu and Sophia Luce for the final legs in lane three and four. And in lane two, that's Pierce Farrell. 